Are you suffering from persistent tightness or discomfort between the shoulder blade and your spine? Having stretches or using a lacrosse ball helps temporarily, but the symptoms always come back. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Zach Gruet here at Performance Sport and Spine, and today's video will discuss why the symptoms are actually coming from your neck and the best way to resolve it permanently. So you may have heard this pain described as rhomboid pain or trap pain, and even though the pain is originating in that area between the shoulder blade and your spine, unless you have some sort of injury or a yanking motion to kind of strain those tissues, it's unlikely that the tissues themselves is actually what's causing your pain. So research has shown that the discs in our neck and these facet joints, the joints in the back of the spine, can actually refer pain to different places, including the area that we're talking about today. So as you can see from this picture right here, each level will refer pain a little bit differently. And the level we're going to be discussing mostly is C6-7. So for posture, it's somewhat of a trial and error approach, but typically the best way to do it is find a position that has your symptoms decrease, not the perception of right posture. So if you're sitting relaxed and your posture feels poor but your symptoms are gone, don't sit upright and pull your head back if it increases your symptoms. So a couple rule of thumbs is don't have excessive forward or backwards motions and may need to find different positions throughout the day that help dissipate the symptoms. And again, your symptoms should dictate your posture, not your perception of right posture. So now we're gonna start the exercise portion. So if we work on thoracic mobility, the upper back, that can help dissipate or decrease symptoms of the neck. So when you're doing these exercises, it's good to visualize this upper joints, this upper back part being the ones that move and not your neck or your low back. For sets and reps, we recommend four to six times a week, one to two sets of about eight reps. However, this will always be variable to the individual. We also say try all five exercises, but focus on the ones that seem to be the most effective. So the thoracic cat camel. On your hands and knees, rock back your buttocks onto your heels, and then you're gonna round your upper back, your thoracic spine up towards the ceiling, pulling your chin down towards your sternum, and then you're gonna extend or arch your upper back and thoracic spine upwards now, some people may get irritated if they extend their neck too much, so we recommend only coming up to neutral with your neck and focusing on your upper back. And then again, reverse back, so round your back up towards the ceiling, bring your chin to your sternum, really stretching right through here, and then repeat. So thoracic rotation on your hands and knees, rock back onto your heels, placing one hand behind your head. So now pressing down with your arm, you're gonna rotate your hand and upper back up towards the ceiling, Again, trying to feel a stretch on your upper back or your thoracic spine. When doing this, again, try to keep your neck in neutral and don't extend your head up because that can irritate a lot of folks. Again, you're trying to kind of counter-rotate one arm and press into the floor with the opposite arm. Again, make sure to keep your weight back onto your heels so it's emphasizing the upper thoracic spine. So seated thoracic extension. So in a seated position, interlock your fingers and place them behind your neck. And then we're going to arch our upper back while keeping our neck in neutral and our elbows in and trying to minimize arching your low back. If your low back gets tight, you're moving too much of your low back and it's your upper back that we care about. So there's not a lot of motion, but it's a subtle motion. And again, you should feel tension in the upper thoracic spine. And again, you wanna keep your neck in neutral and just try to squeeze your abs so you don't let your ribs come up in the front. Again, you should feel gentle though tension on your upper thoracic spine or upper back. So wall extension. So standing away from the wall, put your hands about shoulder height on the wall. Keeping your chin in neutral, you're gonna press your hands into the wall while pressing your torso through your arms. Again, trying to extend through that upper back, not the low back. And it's important to keep your neck in neutral. And again, keep pressure into the wall as you bend down. If you wanna make this more challenging, you can lower your hands on the wall. And if it's a little bit too challenging, you can regress it by keeping your hands higher on the wall. But the whole point is to keep the neck in neutral, press into the wall, and then press your torso down towards the floor, feeling a stretch on your upper back and thoracic spine. Prone thoracic extension. So laying on the ground with your forearms flat on the floor with your elbows bent, you're going to pull your chin up towards the ceiling, pressing your forearms down into the ground, kind of retracting and squeezing your shoulder blades together while keeping your neck in neutral, not extending it, and then relax. Again, try to think about opening up or mobilizing that upper back by pressing your chin backwards towards the ceiling, squeezing your shoulder blades, and lifting your upper back, keeping your neck in neutral. Again, relax. And then one more time, pulling the chin up towards the ceiling, retracting the shoulder blades, keep the neck in neutral, and then relax. So we're quickly going to address why using the crossbar or stretching is not an effective treatment. Now the area of complaint is the victim and the neck is the culprit. So anything to the area at best will only provide temporary relief and excessive can actually cause the irritation to be worse. So we highly recommend that you either taper it off or just stop completely. There may be some small difference between the facet joint patterns and the disc, but for simplicity's sakes in this video, we're going to assume they're the same. And it's also important to note that there may be some variation person to person. 
Thank you so much for watching our video. We hope you found it helpful. If so, would you please like the video and subscribe to our channel as it helps us reach a larger audience.